When you think of high school hockey here in New England, you might think of schools like Catholic Memorial, Lawrence Academy, or St. Sebastian's. But here in Hingham, the Harbor men and Harbor women are proof that public high school hockey in New England is very much alive. I'm Joel Idelson, and this is New England Hockey Journal. all over on this third period. They are gassed. And I don't think anyone in here is tired. It's a buzz out there, it's energy. This is like the best type of game. We're all buzzing, let's just finish it. We gotta keep calm heads, level heads, and we're gonna get this going. Yeah, boys, just stay away. It's gonna be four to five minutes ice time for each one of you, all right? We're rolling forward, let's keep it going. It's a new year and the Hingham hockey team is on a mission. After reaching the semifinals in the Super 8 tournament a year ago, the Harbor men are looking to go even further this year. Losing to Pope Francis one step away from the Garden after coming in as kind of an underdog as a public school team in the Massachusetts Super 8 tournament, it's tough business. We still hold it as motivation, except we think that it's a new year with a new team and we're past it. I think that this team has something different that we have to bring to the table and last year was last year. For a public school to even get invited to the Super 8, it's extremely difficult. Yet Hingham, a town with a rich hockey tradition, seems to be there as much as the top Catholic schools in the state. Their schedule prepares them for that. In 1997-98 season, we moved to an independent status. Previous to that, we were in some leagues and, you know, the games weren't helping us and they weren't helping the teams we were playing. We were winning games significantly. Which led then head coach Garrett Regan to seek better competition. You know, Garrett came up with the idea about going independent. It took a little while for us to be voted into an independent status between the league we left and the MIAA. We struggled that first year, and then uh, the, I think the next three years we made the tournament, and then in the fourth year, or fifth year, we made the Super 8 tournament for the first time. And so since then, I think there's been 16 seasons. We've made it 13 out of the 16 seasons. In one of those seasons, 2010, Hingham won the Super 8, a rarity for a public school. Independent status creates an opportunity for us to make our own schedule. We try to schedule the hardest schedule that we can so at the end of the year that we have a team that's, that's battle tested. Help them! Help them! We play one of the toughest schedules. We have all the Catholic school teams, the top 20 rankings we play, I want to say north of 15 of them. It's high speed, it's intense, it's amazing. When it comes to attorney time, and Super 8, we're always prepared. We've played the best teams and we're not scared. You're telling me you called a penalty right when you ran into the guy? There's no easy game, there's no games off. It's the whole season and everybody loves that. I think the kids uh, would rather play in the Super 8 than the Division 1 tournament for sure. And, you know, we've played so many times in the tournament now that that's kind of a barometer for success. As it is in 2019. I like it how people kind of keep us as the underdog. They don't believe in you and then you go out every single game and everybody on the team is contributing and we're working towards that goal of the Super 8 tournament and I think we have the group to go there. When we come back in New England Hockey Journal, we will get to know the Hingham captains. But first, let's get some hockey tips from RB Hockey. We're at the Rodman Arena in Walpole, Massachusetts. Once again, I am with Rob Barletta from RB Hockey and the Walpole Express. Rob, tell us what we're going to see today. We're going to do a couple of different drills. We're going to do competition drills. We're going to get these guys really skating, being creative, getting on their edges. And we're also going to do some puck protection. Okay, let's take a look. In here, you get to see the Mohawk. And these guys are really trying to compete, stopping on one foot. You see the power turns, and they're really moving. And the good thing is it's a competition. These guys get to have a little fun. And, and they really want to compete against each other. They re no one wants to get caught. A game is all five foot battles. You know, it, it's not straight up the ice. It stops, it starts, and winning the races for those pucks. And this stuff teaches all that. And you, and you turn this into a competition, it's fun for these guys. They don't want to lose. No, they don't want to lose. What are you looking for here, Rob? Well, the guy on the offensive side, he's trying to work his way into the middle. He's trying to push off. The guy on the defensive side is really trying to work this guy and make him change directions. All right, is the offensive guy trying to create more separation from the boards? He's trying to create more separation from the boards. If he gets pushed onto the boards, he will actually use his stick and push himself off. This is a cutoff drill now. What I want you guys to do, we're going to be racing for the puck. I want you guys, whoever can get out in front of the other guys, you want to have a nice wide stance, try to cut the other guy off. 
protect the puck, drive out with the puck, and escape with it. All right? Good job. Way to get in front of him. So, Rob, he angled that out. He, he didn't go straight it. to the boards. Straight to the boards is a dangerous play. These guys want to be able to get in front of the other guy and change their skate angle. That way, they're not going head first into the boards. That's it. Good. So that time, the white player was able to get in front of the black player. Yeah, he also has momentum as he's coming around. As he's coming around. And he's opening, he's got a big wide stance and he's got his knees bent. And he's really driving out, protecting that puck. All right, Rob, that was a lot of fun. These kids were competing. I mean, you could tell they didn't want to lose those battles. Oh, no, absolutely not. And we try to make it like a shift in hockey, so I don't want these guys going too long. I want them to be really creative on their edges, moving. But then, you know, when they went through those drills and they get the puck protection, they wanted to come out of the corner with the puck. They were sweating in the end, too. Yeah, they were. For more information, check out Rob at rbhockey.com. RB Hockey is powered by CCM. CCM, made of hockey. Sports Etc. here in Arlington, Massachusetts. I'm with Paul Stanton once again. Good to see you, Paul. Nice to see you, Joel. Paul, we've talked about goalie equipment before. What do we have here from Vaughn? We have the new Vaughn SLR2 Pro Carbon Pad, which is launching this month. Okay, tell me what's new and exciting about this particular pad. Well, the uniqueness of this pad is it's, got, it's fully reinforced with carbon from top to bottom on the pad. All right, so there's carbon fiber in the middle here. How does that help with flexibility? So what they've done on this one, uh, the carbon fiber is the same thing they use in composite yeah, sticks. Uh, but, but it might, might, doesn't it stiffen up the pad it a bit? It does stiffen the pad up, which is important for goalies. It gives you more torsional stability. It doesn't let the pad reduce in size over use. Okay. But the nice thing about this pad is it's segmented internally in the pad, okay. so it's not too stiff. So if a person wants to have a little bit more flex in the boot or a little bit more flex in the thigh rise, you Got can it. change that as well. Okay, what else is unique about this pad here? Well, the unique thing about the pad also is the quick slide technology, which oh, right is what's here. on the side. Yeah, okay. It's a new material that uh, uh, Vaughn is using. Uh, they've tested out the NHL level, so it's going to be a lot more uh, durable, but it's a greater improvement in terms of slide across the crease. Boy, they make it harder and harder to score on goalies these days. They do. For more things hockey and for more things goalie, come down and see Paul here at Sports Etc. Everyone needs to bring energy. It's going to take every single kid in this locker room. Let's go. Try all three. One, two, three. Pride. We say pride before every game in our huddle, and we just really strive to be one of the teams that is really hard to play against. We break it down by saying pride because we have so much pride wearing our Hingham jersey. Seniors Jake Higgins and Will Kenny realize the importance that comes with being named captain of Hingham Hockey. It's definitely an honor. I mean, with the history of our program, it's awesome to be able to wear the C, knowing all the captains before me. At the banquet last year, being named captain alongside Will Kenny gave me a little butterflies in my stomach a little bit, just that it's in my hands, it's a piece of the legacy of Hingham Hockey. The Hingham Hockey tradition runs through both their families. Jake and I have been friends forever. We met through hockey. He has an older brother and I have an older brother and it's kind of just been a family relationship. We've built up a relationship that's never gonna fall apart. He has the same passion level that I do. We both have that compete factor that makes us, I think, a great pair of captains to take control of a team like this. I have some ideas, I bounce it off of him. He has some that bounce off of mine. Sometimes they contradict, but we always come to a compromise. We never argue about anything. It's always positive, looking for what's best for us as captains to give to the team and to the coaches, and we work really well together. Kind of take turns on who has to kind of fill the bad cop role and who has to say the good cop. Like we text separately whenever something needs to be said to the team or whenever we need to talk to someone. Except I think that the responsibilities are kind of evenly distributed between the two of us. Higgins is a defenseman, one of the best in the state. I'm an aggressive player. I like to think of myself as a two-way player. Growing up, I watched a lot of videos of Eric Carlson, Duncan Keith, P.K. Subban, trying to be defensive. Obviously, I'm a defenseman at first, protect my net, get the puck to my forwards, but then at the same time, I want to get up the ice, use my speed, use my stick handling abilities, get in the offensive zone and work around. Jake is a tremendous hockey player. He's an offensive style defenseman. Very strong in the defensive zone, very physical, very smart, doing a tremendous job as a leader this year. And I hope his desire to end up playing at a high level of college hockey ends up happening for him because I think he's very capable. Will sets an example for the team with his work ethic, just like Jake does. With his size out there, he's a little more physical up front. Uh, he can set the tone for the team. He's our leading scorer as well. I think everyone on the team looks up to him. 
I like to think of myself as a grindy energizer. Like I think that when my line goes out there, people expect us to produce and make a hit, make a play, be in the offensive zone, kind of spark the team to do something. And I think that so far this year that we've done that. They worked harder than almost any other captains I've had to bring the team together and be one unit on and off the ice. I have the most respect for the both of them. They don't want to make it seem like they're above us. They know that we're on the same level. As a group of seniors, we all respect each other the same amount. And Will and Jake really instill that culture into our team. We're not a team of individuals, we're a team of brothers. I think that's really the message they've gone across this year. We're all one group. There's no inner circle. There's no cliques. We're all one team. We're all hanging hockey. Stay with us on New England Hockey Journal as we see how two towns use their rivalry to raise money for the family of a fallen hero. Welcome back to New England Hockey Journal. I am with Jeff Cox from the New England Hockey Journal, and this is Prospects Pulse. Jeff, today I want to start off with Brett Burrard. His father, David, is the head coach at, uh, at Holy Cross. His father also played at Providence College, and I understand his son is committed to Providence College as well. Yeah, Brett's a uh, very talented but small forward playing for the U.S. NTDP U-17 team out in Plymouth, Michigan. Played at Bishop Hendrickson last year. He's a uh, you know small forward that you know kind of gets by with really high compete level, good hockey sense. He's a um, tremendous player. He's having a great year for the NTDP team, and uh, he's a kid that Providence really you know, jumped on right away and obviously, you know, makes sense. He's a kid from East Greenwich, Rhode Island. His dad was a Providence assistant, uh, you know, played at Providence, so it, it makes sense and he'll be a great addition for the Friars. Let's talk about Sam Colangelo, a late 01 out of Lawrence Academy, having a tremendous season so far. Yeah, he's a uh, junior there. He's, just about every game I've seen him play this year, he's had a couple goals. He's uh, just got it, you know, he's got a great shot. You know, he rips it, good accuracy. He knows where to go to find pucks. He, he, his vision's kind of underrated. He sees the ice really well, makes some really great passes. You know, his skating's gotten a lot better. He played on the Ivan Holinka team this year. He's a, he's a player that's really, really coming on. He's getting even better. Um, he's a potential first round draft pick in 2020. I want to talk about Henry Wilder. He's out of Hotchkiss, somebody who we've not heard a lot about, but he seems to be popping up on the radar now. Yeah, he, he's always been a pretty good goaltender, but you know, playing out at Hotchkiss, a little under the radar, but uh, started out the season with three shutouts in his first four games, inc including one in the Flood Mar tournament. He's getting interest from Michigan, Cornell, UMass, uh, UNH, some couple other hockey East and ECAC hockey schools. He's a uh, little undersized for modern era goaltender, but he's a uh, you know, technically sound, athletic kid. Dad played uh, baseball at UNH, so you know, be interested to see where he ends up in the next month or so, but you know, he's getting a ton of interest. I want to talk about Ben Meehan. He's out of Dexter playing for Coach Donato over there. He's a UMass Lowell commit, I understand. Yeah, he's a Walpole Mass kid. His uh, dad, Scott, played at UMass Lowell from 1989 to 1993. Ben's just a steady, solid defender. Doesn't make any mistakes, not flashy. You really have to watch him to notice him, but he's, he's just a tough kid. You know, he makes good plays, smart break on the breakout defends well, has a good stick. He's just a typical UMass Lowell commit. You know, they don't make too many mistakes with, you know, just good good stick and he's uh, he's uh, going to be a really good player for them. It sounds like we got four real talented kids coming out of New England here. Yeah, for sure. For more on prospects and everything New England hockey, check out hockeyjournal.com. You know, the town, the community, everyone knows what Hingham hockey is about. We have a lot of people that are committed to hockey for years and years. The program dates back to 1935. I liken it to Minnesota high school hockey. It's the same type of thing. You know when you go to the rink that the stands are going to be filled with people and people are going to be cheering you on. As a player, there's nothing better. Recently, the arena was packed for a very special doubleheader as the Hingham boys and girls teams took on Weymouth to raise money for the family of slain Weymouth Police Sergeant Michael Chesna. Tom Finley, the Hingham girls coach, came up with the idea to try to help raise some money for the Chesna Foundation. We always play Weymouth, or we have the last several years, noontime on Christmas Eve. And this year, the girls played Weymouth right before our game. Also in the house was Weymouth native and Minnesota wild forward, Charlie Coyle. The town of Hingham came out, and the town of Weymouth came out, and uh, you know, joined forces, and just an amazing event. The Hingham girls hockey program began in 2003, and has developed its own winning tradition. 
Carry, carry. That's good reverse. Oh, you're above the puck again, Cat. Our youth program is fantastic. We have so many great uh, parents and you know, ex-college hockey players and some pro hockey players that have been able to coach in our youth hockey and help our kids along. And uh, we're just blessed with, uh, you know, having such a great tradition. One of the things that I'm very proud of is uh, many of my players who've gone off to play college hockey end up as being the captains of their college hockey team, which to me means I've been successful with actually teaching them the true values of being on a team. you got to be smart. One of the leaders of this year's team is goalie Leo White. A four-year starter, she now has her sights set on playing college hockey. I have a pond in my backyard, and when it would freeze over, me and my family would go for skates. And I'm the youngest of three, and my oldest brother started to play ice hockey, so my mom signed me up when I was in kindergarten. I just stuck with it ever since. Like many girls playing hockey, Leah started out playing with the boys. My mom didn't want me to be a goalie. She said, the only way I'll let you play goalie is if you switch to playing girls hockey. She's one of our best goalies in the MIA hockey right now, as far as I'm concerned. She keeps us in every game. She's smart. She can react to quick pucks. She can react to rebounds. Just a wonderful player and we're lucky to have. I liked watching a lot of hockey and it was really the year when the Bruins went to the Stanley Cup. I just was very interested in the goalies and how much they impacted the game. She's a fan of her sport. She looks and she knows what the other teams are doing. She's just such a value to our program, and I'm very proud to have coached her for four years. My oldest brother played for Hingham High School, too, and so I'd watch his games and just hope that I'd be on the team one day, and now I'm finally on the team, and it's really exciting. I'm really happy I get to play for Hingham. Stay with us for more of Hingham High School on New England Hockey Journal. We're at the Rodman Arena in Walpole, Massachusetts. This is the home of RB Hockey and the Walpole Express. I am here with Michelle Lounsbury from Power Play Strength and Conditioning, and it's good to see you again, Michelle. Me too. All right, so tell us what we're going to see today. Sure. We're going to watch three different ways I like to train single leg balance with my hockey players. All right, let's take a look. One of the first exercises I always start with, it's almost like a baseline single leg exercise. So it's called the goblet split squat. So he's gonna grab either a kettlebell or a dumbbell, underhand position, keeping his elbows in nice and tight. From there, he's gonna split his stance. He's gonna drop his back knee straight down to the ground, lightly tap on top of that and drive all the way up, pushing straight up through that heel. What I really want to focus on here is that his knee isn't tracking too far forward over his toes. If it is, I'll have them lengthen out their stance just a little bit, drop down to his knee, and then see how he keeps that nice tracking over his leg. Single leg exercises where he's also focusing on engaging his core by holding and stabilizing that dumbbell in front of him. So Kevin showed us that first exercise, which is the goblet split squat. Aiden is now going to show what I progress to in the next phase, and it's going to be the rear foot elevated or RFE squat. So from here, I like to have my athletes set themselves up from the bottom up. Once I see that Aiden's ready to go, that back knee is underneath his hip, and he has a nice 90 degree angle at that front knee. Toe is going to be straight ahead. He's going to grab onto those dumbbells, set himself up. Nice, tall, proud chest. He's going to push into that ground, drive himself up to a nice, tall standing position. As he lowers that knee down, having an Airx mat underneath his knee is a good tactile cue for him. As soon as that knee lowers slowly down, he touches it, he's going to drive himself right back up, pushing that front leg straight. Mike's going to demonstrate the single leg squat. One of my favorite exercises here Progressively, it's gonna be in one of our last phases. He's gonna set himself up on a tall box. I'm gonna ask my athletes only to really grab five pound plates or dumbbells. This weight is really just to help counterbalance him. As he's pushing his hips and sitting back into that hip crease, we want his arms to extend so that he's balancing. From here, making sure that that front toe is gonna to be straight ahead and he's keeping all that weight back onto his heel as he drives himself back up to a nice standing position. All right, Michelle, so single leg training is important, but why can't you just train both legs at the same time? It's a great question. Whenever you're watching an athlete on the ice, you never see a hockey player or a skater push at the same time. Yeah. They're always pushing and gliding off of one leg. All right, she's got a point. So for more information, check out rbhockey.com. RB Hockey is sponsored by Rodman Ford located on Route 1 South across from Gillette Stadium. Slot, slot. Oh. 
I see myself as kind of a caretaker for the program. Coaches and myself try to look after this program and keep it going for what it's been. And the players, we make sure that they know that there's been 84 teams before them. And guys wore these shirts uh, that were very successful years ago. And they owe it to them to be hardworking, committed, and dedicated as much as they can. There's nothing like the sense of a real team in public school hockey because you're all going to the same school, you're all traveling together to practice, you all live in the same town. So you're all with each other. You're not coming from separate towns, meeting up at the rink for two hours and then going home to your own respective houses. I really don't think you can find a bond like you get with uh, playing with the guys you grew up with, going to school with. It's just hard working kids that want to play and the passion and the energy out on the ice. You can see it as soon as the game starts. When I walk around wearing the Tingham jacket in the town, everyone asks me how we're doing, when our next game is, and just everything about the team, everything about the town, they care about hanging hockey. We'll see you next time on New England Hockey Journal. You know, Mikey Carroll had a really good goal today and played an ultimate like, really good game, so I'm going to give this one to Mikey. All right. There's a lot of guys that deserve this, but I'm going to give it to T-Ranch, Poppin' and Genie. Yeah. Who are we going to give this not a big deal trophy to? Joe So? All right. Joe Sully. So